everyone, Science Viking here, and it's time for the second episode of Myth 2 Soul Blighter. You may notice I'm still on the same screen as the previous, as the end of the previous episode. That's because I'm actually recording this immediately after finishing recording the first episode. Because one of the flaws in this game is, there's no way to save on the summary screen, and hitting next level goes straight into the level intro. So... We're, I'm, we're just gonna do the level intro and then I'll save once I get back to the, once we get into the meat of the next level. So let us begin. Tuesday, August 26th, between Tallow and Willow Creek. With no small risk to ourselves, we managed to rescue the villagers from certain death. The endless rain and nightmarish parade of that living corpses hand. has left an indelible imprint weird. of the events of yesterday on my mind. As we hurried back to Willow Creek, Rurik, one of the village leaders, demanded to be taken to see the mayor of Tallow. When questioned, he offered us little, save that he had important information about the recent grave robberies. Rurik is well respected by the townspeople, so Kruniak chose not to press him further for information. Willow Creek was attacked repeatedly last night. Kuniak stationed archers on the perimeter of the town, and the bowmen were able to pick off the stumbling corpse men as they approached. But there seemed to be no end to them. We have even seen soulless and ghouls skulking about on the outskirts of town. All of us are beginning to worry, including Kuniak. When we departed, the commander left a handful of men to protect the village. The rest of us are headed to Tallow with Rorik. Yeah, so we've decided the situation has escalated out of our control, and so we need help. And so we're taking, we're bringing a witness to all of this as proof that uh, this is really happening so that we can get reinforcements. The safety of Tallow lies ahead. Follow Rurik to the town gates. Make sure he reaches the town alive. Yep, this is an escort mission. This is where things really start to get challenging. And our level hints... If Rurik gets too far ahead of your force, stop following him. He'll stay close to you. Basically, if he gets ahead past a certain point, he'll just he'll slow down. There's no need to kill all of the enemy. Take on enemy forces one group at a time. Well, where possible. Use trees as cover against soulless spears. Yep, the enemy gets to have ranged units now. We've gotten two levels where the enemy is restricted to only having melee, but now we have to deal with enemy ranged units. That's going to be interesting. And, yep, dwarves, kind of like what I was talking about before, dwarves are most effective against slow units like Thrall. Bowmen are most effective against long ranged units like Soulless. What are Soulless? Well, you'll find out in a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to save, and I'm going to get us a lovely fresh recording file. So, I will be back in a moment. Okay, I am back with a lovely fresh recording Not file. And, let's see if we can get to Tallow. So this is Rurik, he's slow moving, he's fragile, and he can't fight. And we have to keep him alive. Well, honestly, yep. him not being able to fight is more of a good thing than a yep. bad thing, because if he could fight, you know what would happen. His AI would constantly be picking fights with the enemy, yes. Yes. and we'd keep losing, and you'd have to be really careful to keep him from charging into battle. So, the fact he can't fight is actually really helpful. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. And I advance somewhat carefully. And it's the first catch of the day. And this is a soulless. Soulless throw javelins, and they are the enemy's answer to bowmen. There's the enemy's kind of standard ranged unit. Fortunately, there's one of him and four of my archers, so I should be able to take him out. Now, the thing about soulless is they're ranged units, so they're supposed to be weak against melee units. But the issue with using your melee units against Soulless is that Soulless can fly. So they can just retreat to, like, over water or up a hill that your melee units can't climb to get into a position where you can't reach them. And these are Thrall. These are the actual standard melee unit for the, for the Dark. 
And as you can see, they don't take very much damage from arrows. My bowmen are barely doing anything to them. The bowmen could reliably take out ghasts, but thrall are a bit more of a problem. They can, however, pick off thrall that have already been damaged by my dwarves. But yeah, we're at the point where explosives units are actually pretty much necessary. And, appropriately enough, there's a group of thrall pursuing us as we move towards Tallow. Yes, sir. Need to make sure they don't get too close. Rurik, I believe, moves faster than them, and I know that all of our other units move faster than the Thrall. Just kind of staying behind Rurik a little bit so that we can, uh... But now there's enemies in front of him, and it's another Solus. And the problem is that since we have enemies on both sides of us, we need to be very careful. And we also need to be careful about the fact that Rurik, uh, if he sees, if he gets too close to enemies, he'll panic and try to run away from them. So if we're surrounded, he won't try to move toward Tallow. We're moving. Okay. At some point, I'm gonna need to. I'll let the dwarves yeah. handle those. Start taking apart those thrall while everyone else is moving forward. Yeah. This game is really all about multitasking. Except you also have to micromanage your units, which makes for a rather delicate balance you have to maintain. We're going to have some difficulty taking that Solus out, so let's make use of the fire arrow. Solus don't deal very well with fire arrows. They can Fire arrows can be very useful. The main challenging aspect of them is that each uh, bowman only gets one. And now we have Thrall coming in from the side over here. Gonna need to be careful about that. And behind them are Goals. Goals, we don't really get an equivalent, and Goals fall into kind of a gray area between the different unit types, unit categories. So Goals are technically melee units, but unlike normal melee units, they're very fast, but quite fragile. In addition, they can actually pick up and throw objects, so they can grab just various objects on the ground and then throw them at you. Now, the thing about goals is they're only, they're dangerous because unlike normal melee units, they're very fast, and so they can easily ca uh, just charge your bowmen and dwarves while your bowmen and dwarves aren't prepared to deal with them. So, however, because they're fragile and they don't hit very hard, goals die very quickly if they end up fighting your melee units. So they don't really fit into the normal unit triangle that I talked about before. There is another thing that they can do which we'll get into in the later levels, but they don't have the ability to do it in this level. Now another thing we need to be careful about is... Undead, being undead, do not need to breathe. Because they do not need to breathe, they can hide underwater. Solus can't hide because they're hovering, so they float above the water, but yep. Yes, sir. We're on it. Here we have a couple of Thrall hiding in the deep water to ambush us in case we let Rurik or any of our other more fragile units get too close. This is a fairly common trick for the enemy, so, and it can get you into a lot of trouble if you're not paying attention. So just always be very careful when going near deep water, because there could be undead waiting to ambush you. Usually, sending a single fast-moving unit near the body of water will lure them into revealing themselves, but sometimes they're extra careful and specifically wait until uh, the bulk of your force is standing over the water before they attack. Anyway, this is not Tallow, but we've reached kind of the outskirts of Tallow. So just a little bit farther. There's really just one last main obstacle we have to deal with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beyond just keeping our eyes out for any surprises. Right. Just keep moving. Got it. Gonna take you two warriors and On bring you way. back here. Keep. I'm gonna keep a couple of warriors right next to Rurik yes, in case sir. something gets too close to him. This level is not as hard or as frustrating as its nature of as an escort mission would make you expect. Yes. Even though Rurik is absurdly slow. Yes, sir. And the main new threat is goals. 
Those goals right can very easily... Those goals can very easily just run up to Rurik and hack him to death before you really have a chance to do anything about it. So... This is why I have two warriors standing next to him and why I dispatched two other warriors specifically to clear out the goals. The warriors will make pretty quick work of the goals if they can catch up to them, but since the goals move faster than the warriors do, the goals can just make a break for it and attack a more fragile unit. And behind the goals are even more thrall. But... Okay, now that the goals have been handled, there are Thrall pursuing us, but one, we could take him if we had to, and two, we really don't have to because the mission ends as soon as Rurik gets inside. Because this is Tallow, and it has nice, beefy, defensive walls. If Rurik mo I think Rurik moves at the same speed that the Thrall do, so he will never gain a lead on them, but he'll only yes, lose a lead if yes. there's some obstacle he has to avoid. Or if he ha gets uh, spooked yes. by another group of enemies. So, we just wait for the wait for Rurik to go inside, and then we follow him inside. And then all is well. We're moving. And uh, Charles has also decided he wants to take shelter in here. And Solus. Unfortunately, they showed up a little bit too late. Yes. Clear the gates. Yep, Got it. clear the gates. Yes. I'm actually not sure what happens if the gate tries to close while there's somebody else. There. Oh, he just clips through it. That's what happens. Okay, that was it. That mission was not as hard as you would expect. And that's the end of our first ex uh, escort mission. Well, it's called an export mission. There we go. I love how the guys who were guarding Tallow are also celebrating as if they actually did anything. They're just so like, yeah, we um stood here. We're awesome. And no casualties again. But as you can see, now they're starting to break out some of the more dangerous unit types, and, ge and generally speaking, the challenge is getting a lot stiffer. Well, that's going to be even further increased in our next level. Tuesday, September 2nd, near Braille. When we reached Tallow, Rorik told the mayor he had overheard the brigands speaking of taking corpses to a castle near the town of Braille. Indeed, the locals we encountered on the way said they had seen many wagons filled with bodies being hauled into the keep. The master of this castle is Baron Kildare. We were joined at Tallow by reinforcements to attack the Baron's stronghold like nice and put an end to his unwholesome trade in human remains. Unwholesome. This evening at our camp just outside the keep, I was awakened by a low rumble. We watched in helpless silence as a massive army of Thrall, ten abreast and a hundred deep, marched out of the main gate heading south. Kruniak fears their destination is Talon, and has sent a runner to warn the town. I cannot help but feel somewhat relieved. We should meet little or no resistance tomorrow instead of facing hundreds upon hundreds of Thrall. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Talon. Oh, it looks like our friends in Tallow are screwed. Ten abreast, a hundred deeps. That's a thousand thrall. All to attack that small town. Well, I suppose the good news is we don't have to deal with them because we're going to be laying siege to the fortress that they just left. Well, this is also a rather complicated mission. This was actually one of the two... This and the following mission were the two missions that made it into the demo for Myth 2. And they're two of the more complex missions. They're also in general, actually really good, which is why they made it into the demo. They wanted to put their best foot forward. But as you can tell from the objectives, so as you can tell from the objectives, this is going to be a complicated one. Penetrate the outer defenses of the Baron's castle. 
Sneak your invisible Pathfinder Dwarf into the castle to lower the drawbridge. Those of you who've played Myth 1 know what we're in for dealing with that. And fight your way into the castle and then to the entry gate of the keep. And the level specific hints are... Rush enemy bowmen with a warrior or two to disrupt their formations. I've talked about that, that ranged units don't deal terribly well with being attacked by melee units. Keep your troops out of range of fire from the battlements as much as possible. Really just good advice whenever you're laying siege to any kind of castle. The grass in the village provides great fuel for flame arrows. Hint, hint. Well, it is a hint, so I suppose that's appropriate. A Pathfinder Dwarf maintains his stealth by not touching or attacking enemy units or dropping a satchel charge. So, just like in Myth 1, if you bump into an enemy, attack them, or use a satchel charge, you will be knocked out of stealth, which can get you killed. And the Pathfinder Dwarf will have to wait for one of the enemy to open the side gate. I don't know exactly what that means yet, but you'll see in a moment. And shield your bowmen and dwarves with warriors when you send them across the drawbridge. Again, we'll see the implications of that a bit later. Yes. At this point, we have... I think this is the... Lar I believe this is the largest yes, force we've had so far. Four bowmen and two dwarves, just like last time, yes. but we get some more warriors. And... It. It's a bit of a hike yes. to get to our first objective. However, there are goals. I talked about what goals can do before, and you see they're splitting off to attack from the sides because yes, they specifically want to get the uh, unprotected, squishy ranged units. Yes, sir. So we need to position the warriors like so, and yes, carefully sir. make sure that the goals cannot actually get yes, past the warriors to the ranged units. It's also very important to make sure that the dwarves don't accidentally Ooh, blow anything up that's supposed to be on our side. Alright, and that's that group of ghouls handled. Yeah, fighting a group of ghouls generally is either very good or very bad. They either do very little damage because you manage to force them out into the open and take them out with your warriors, or they get into your back line and cause serious problems for one or more of your valuable units. There's very little middle ground when dealing with ghouls. Got it. Just need to distribute yes, the warriors around the rest of the units. And in the meantime, the bowmen are free to take a few shots at them. They may even take one out. There we go, that's one. Still managed to throw his projectile. Yeah, for the moment, their ability to pick up and throw things does very little. They'll just have, like, a blade or something that they can throw that does a little bit of damage. But... Later on, they start getting their hands on more valuable projectiles, which can actually be seriously dangerous. That isn't going to happen for a couple of levels yet, though. I believe that's the end of the goals, too. Which And here's the opening to the gate into the town. So we have a gate, and then we have like, the castle town area, and then we have a bigger a bigger gate and a bigger wall to protect the actual castle itself. And uh, I see more goals. Yes. Quite a few more goals. I was seriously wrong about how many there were. Okay, got to be careful. The other thing goals like to do is they like to wait until you engage something else and then they start attacking you. Got it. Because if you're fighting something else, you'll have a lot of trouble dealing with the ghouls. Right. We're moving. Gotta be careful. Your order, sir. Though you yes, generally, sir. when you're engaging a group of enemies that are in front of you, you actually want your warriors to be kind of in the back so that they don't block the shots of your ranged units. Ready. But this is what we're up against. So Thrall and Dark Bowman, and the goals have decided that now is the time to attack, so... Let's take advantage of this situation. Give the dwarves a chance to get some action. Alright, and now it's the warrior's turn. It very quickly becomes the warrior's turn. 
These goals seem to actually be programmed to kind of be dumber than what we'll encounter later. Normally, they're less willing to actually get into a fight with your warriors. Like, they'll... In some levels, they're programmed so that if they get too close to your melee units, they'll actually run away. So that they kind of run in, harass your units a little bit, and then run back out. Whereas these goals, if they get an opportunity to get into melee combat with their with your warriors, they'll usually do that, even though it isn't to their advantage. Okay, get some flame going. One of the main advantages of the flaming arrows, aside from doing damage to enemies, is a lot of enemies... Okay, get out. You guys get away from the fire. Is that in addition to inflicting damage over time, enemy units generally will not stand in flame. What that means is... You can hit them, you can place some flame under where they're standing. Ah, get out of the fire. Casualty. Okay, we already lost somebody, so this isn't going to be a no casualties run. You can uh, place flame on the area where the enemy is standing to force them to reposition. Okay. Actually, I don't need the archers for that anymore. Okay. Yes, okay, you, I believe, have a shot. However, unlike ghasts, dwarves on... Even on the easiest difficulty, dwarves cannot one-shot thrall from full health. It takes two hits to kill a thrall. Yes, sir. However, these bowmen have lost their melee escort, which means now the warriors can just run in and finish them off. Unfortunately, we lost somebody to a fire arrow. I legitimately forgot that the enemy bowmen will use their fire arrows. But yeah, the archers aren't... The enemy bowmen aren't going to do very much damage to my warriors, and they can't move fast enough to put some distance between them. And stay down. Yes? Unfortunately, Simone over here is really not having a good day. I suppose he's better off than yes. the guy who's dead, but... And... Reinforcements, as soon as we no longer need them. Yes, no, we're going to need these guys later, but yeah, once you kill off yes. the enemies that were guarding yes. this part of the map, you get reinforcements. Yes, sir. They just need to gather everybody inside the town, and we have completed the first stage of this plan. You see, the thing that this level is built around is that laying siege to an enemy castle is hard. You don't just charge in the front door and stab everybody. You actually need to have a plan. Of course, the game doesn't tell us what the plan is. Instead, we just kind of find out. Well, the, the level objective does sort of, but we essentially find out as we're playing we're through it. Makes for kind of an interesting experience. Got it. How close yes, do we have to get to trigger the next stage? I'm not sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. Because I know once we get within a certain distance of the drawbridge... Oh, right, now I remember. So we have to trigger... So we run up here. And brigands! Remember them? Crud and Rasp. Yeah, so we trigger the brigands to close the drawbridge. So we try to just charge into the castle. And they retreat across the bridge. And like the cowards they are, they close the drawbridge. And that brings us over to our invisible pathfinder dwarf, Yari. Yep, he's invisible, but if he bumps into one of the enemies, then they will detect him, and then he will die very quickly once he's detected. Now, the, uh... In, unlike in the previous, unlike in Myth 1, in Myth 1, the enemies could hear you and would react to the sounds of your movement. These enemies don't do that. Instead, they just follow predetermined paths, and the only issue is if you essentially bump into them by accident. However, this is the side gate they were talking about that we can't open ourselves. I think. Is it? 
No, this isn't. Yeah, it is. That's what I thought. Okay. As soon as I start doubting myself, I discover that I was right all along. So, yeah, we have to pass through when a brigand is passing through going the other direction. Now, huh? However... That I have, mate. That I have. Well, you must be saving up for a reason, huh? Yep, and I took too long and it's closed. I've had my eye on a turnip for quite a while now. Let's listen to these guys talk well, about turnips. Not just any turnip, the world's biggest turnip. And then what, turnip soup for everyone? No, you don't just eat the biggest turnip in the world. Uh, so, you make a wish on it? Now that's just plain silly. Okay, gotta get out of here. Also, I apologize for the jerkiness of the camera movements in the previous video. That was actually because some of my graphical settings weren't what they should have been. I made some adjustments so they shouldn't be... The camera shouldn't be jerky at all anymore. But I apologize for that. It looked kind of weird in a couple of shots. Anyway, now that we are through here... We need to get to the mechanism that holds the drawbridge up. And that is up here on the battlement. Okay, let's let's be careful because there's still a lot of brigands just kind of patrolling. All right, where are you guys headed? Are you guys gonna climb the? Uh... Okay, they're not climbing up to the battlement, so we can just ignore them. Yeah, it's surprisingly easy to just accidentally bump into a group of enemies. And this is the mechanism we need to destroy to cause the drawbridge to fall. However, we're not ready to do that yet. Because, you see this big group of enemies? And there's more of them that we can't see. They will come marching out of the castle to attack the units out here as soon as the drawbridge is open. So let's get ready Got for it. that. Got it. The uh, Pathfinder can just chill for as long as he needs to. He's invisible. They can't detect him. So, just hold still for a minute, Yari. I have something I have to do first. I'm not going to have a use for the satchel charges later in the mission. So, let's just place a handful of them here. It'll take the dwarves a moment to do this because dwarves are infamously okay. slow. Right, and down this way. Okay, are these guys, those guys are climbing up the battlement, so let's move Yari a little over. Just to make sure that he doesn't get booped, because if Yari gets booped, we're in real trouble. Okay, he just can stand, he can keep standing there. Alright. One more. Good enough. Okay. Yes. Get these into position here. I may also use a fire arrow or two. But the issue is Yari is going to have a bit of a fight on his hands after he destroys the gate mechanism. So, let's see. A control click to hit the ground. And do that. Okay, that's the end of the gate mechanism at least. And Yari's already taken a fair amount of damage. Okay. He's at least rid of the archers, though. Well, the archers on this side. Oh, and the archers on the other side can reach him from over here. I didn't realize they could do that. Okay, he needs to get... Yeah, I do want to try to save the Pathfinder. He doesn't get to be in the next mission, but I still want to keep him alive if I can. Okay, unfortunately his AI has gotten a little confused trying to aim at these guys. Let's aim at the ground behind them. And... <laughs> and in true dwarven fashion, he blew himself up. Trying to hit... When trying to hit an enemy that was kind of close to him, at least horizontally, he blew himself up. 
These dwarves, however, are performing more in the manner that I was hoping that they would. And the warriors can finish the job themselves. Let's get them. Yeah, 20 versus 20 warriors against three, because brigands are basically just a pallet swap of warriors. That seems like a fight that we can win. Okay, so the Pathfinder's dead. I'm going to be honest, he usually dies. It's pretty hard to keep the Pathfinder from dying. All right, we just want kind of a mixed formation so that the warriors can serve as meat shields as the ranged units, as the bowmen and dwarves walk across the drawbridge because as you saw half of the bowmen are still active yep this the problem is this castle contains live and active bowmen and Got so yeah. you need to be very careful about how they can affect your um We're moving. your archery macro biome yes all right through yeah. here we're gonna we're gonna take a few shots Another option is just to run your warriors through early and have your warriors just run up to the battlements and take the uh, Dark Bowman out. I do have a group that are under orders to just run up the battlements as soon as they get in there. But there are still a number of brigands as well. Got it. Got it. So you run up there. You guys climb the battlements and... Yeah, I'm pretty sure seven warriors can take out five bowmen. But, you see, we have this kind of... It's fallen apart a little bit, but we have this group of warriors serving as basically meat shields. Okay, get out of range of the battlements, and then we can get into formation. Okay. Seven warriors versus two brigands. I think the warriors will win. So now we want to get... Our ranged units back into formation because we have to kill these guys and that's actually going to require some effort yes sir all right Got it. get the warriors all the way up here We're on it. and there you go all right the warriors will handle that they said they're on it and they meant Ready. it that's also the end of the ranged units that the enemy will have access to for this mission yes sir Alright, alright, warriors go after these, archers go after that one so he doesn't kill any of the dwarves. Okay, archers pull back, dwarves one shot only. Okay, not quite yet, yeah, it wasn't quite as spiffy as I was hoping it would be, but it will work. As a rule... You really do not want to get into a melee fight unless you have the numerical advantage. Okay, and these warriors took out the Dark Bowmen. Took a bit of damage, but they got the job done. Your order, sir. And now let's just head into the gate. Er, uh, we have a couple of brigands to take out first. Oh, and here comes a la- The thing is, the gate has a last little surprise. A new enemy type, Stygian Knights. Stygian knights are basically magically animated suits of armor. The thing about them is, they're highly vulnerable to explosives and completely immune to arrows. They're significantly resistant to melee combat, but they can be taken down by warriors if they're severely outnumbered. But, yeah. And a little bit of friendly fire from the archers this time rather than the dwarves. Stygian knights are completely immune to arrows. So dwarves can make pretty quick work of them because they're very vulnerable to explosives, as you saw. But if you have a group of archers trying to fight against them, they'll be in some serious trouble. And I'll let the dwarves stay behind to deal with the... Uh... Yeah, the bowmen can join them. But we just need to go in here into this breach that we see over here. And then we'll have successfully completed Into the Breach. I don't know if everybody has to go in or if just some units have to for us to win. But in the it's meantime... Not. Let's take out these two brigands before we head before we head to the level exit. I'm gonna see if the bowmen can do this without any help. Yeah, 
Melee units may have the advantage, but numbers is the real advantage. Just having a sufficiently high numerical advantage tends to make the difference. Oh, and killing all of the enemy also counts for winning the level. So since those were the last two enemies, we're done. And, yeah, I actually had a couple of casualties this time. I lost the Pathfinder, because he blew himself up. We lost that Bowman, as you saw. And in that final melee with the Brigands, we did lose a Warrior. So I had a couple of casualties, though I'm still reasonably satisfied with my kill ratio of 26 to 1. And we already had Soblindi, our dwarf from the first mission, who is the rising star in this organization with 60 kills already but the other dwarf is catching up to him and the other two heroes are bowmen of course warriors don't really get very much glory in this game melee units generally don't accumulate very many kills so you don't usually have melee units as heroes anyway i think i can fit one more F more level into this episode so let's see about the next one and we're still in braille there's silver Tuesday, mines over September there. Tuesday, September 2nd, the Keep. Kruniak is more competent in military matters than I had given him credit for. Enlisting the help of Yari, a dwarven pathfinder, to infiltrate the Keep and lower the drawbridge was inspired. I have a newfound respect for the man. But our job here has just begun. We must find the Baron. Only then will his army of the dead be put to rest. Kruniak is nothing if not full of surprises. No sooner had I touched pen to paper in praise of the man than he fell upon one of the captured guards, nearly strangling him to death. I was mortified, but when Kruniak released the fellow, he seemed to awaken as if from a deep slumber. The commander had broken the enchantment that had bound the guard. The guard told us that a few years ago, the Baron had several secret passages constructed so that he could make a quick escape if his safety was ever compromised. Kruniak has sent in a small group of men to hunt down the Baron. He has positioned men at the main entrance to the keep in case the Baron manages to get past them. If the Baron tries to leave through this entrance, he will be killed where he stands. Should he make it one of the secret exits, though, I doubt we would be able to find him in this wild land. Well, that's going to be a challenge. Mission Objectives. The Baron is cornered, but can still escape. Secure the secret exits in the southern corners of the keep. Hunt down and kill the traitorous Baron. Let's see if the hints can give us some clarity on that. Confined spaces like hallways magnify the damage done by a dwarven grenade or satchel charge. The large open halls of the keep are well manned with bowmen and should be approached with caution. Stygian knights are invulnerable to arrows, but are susceptible to explosives. Despite his portly build, the Baron moves quickly. It helps to attack him from several directions at once. So, the two southernmost corners of this map contain secret exits. One of them is this way, and the other is on the opposite corner. The Baron will attempt to escape through these secret exits, and if he succeeds, we lose. So we have to guard the secret exits so that the Baron cannot escape. And then we need to hunt him down and kill him. Now, one of the things about the Baron is that he has a personal guard of four Stygian knights. Actually, first. And in addition, there are just enemies patrolling throughout the keep. Got it. Each of the exits is itself, each of the secret exits is itself guarded. Yeah. But the Baron's personal retinue can be a serious problem, especially for bowmen. So... Each group that's guarding one of the exits needs to have a dwarf okay. with them to be able to dispatch the Baron's personal yeah. guard if necessary. The first exit is over this way. Yes. So... Yes. We may as well start getting ourselves into position to take on the second group, which is in the other direction. Yes. We're moving. We have to cover the exits. I know, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so get through to here. Yes, yes. And there's also brigands patrolling this hallway, but we'll deal with them later. Yes, sir. Got it, yes. First. 
Let's see. Let's take out these brigands. Okay, that's all. The dwarf is only going to be able to get off one shot, but that softened them up quite a bit. And that combined with the fact that there's four warriors versus two brig. Six warriors versus four brigands, I mean. That should be enough. And the other secret exit is here. In the meantime, this group is just going to have to stay here and guard the, uh, whoa! Yes, sir. The secret I exit. Okay. Let's see if I can get a shot off at this group that was previously patrolling this hallway. Burn. I just need one shot. Okay. Okay, see how that killed none of them, because even a perfect hit won't one-shot a brigand, but it seriously wounded them. Unfortunately, one of our warriors is having a bit of a bad day. Yes, sir. Over here. Yes. He hasn't died yet, but he is seriously injured. Though, warriors don't get any weaker as they're damaged until they actually die. Alright. <laughs> Okay. And send in the warriors, and unfortunately I didn't damage that one as much as I was hoping to. But we should be able to handle these brigands. Okay, and that's the second secret exit covered. Yes, sir. Now we have four warriors and some bowmen. In fact, I'm actually going to harvest a couple of warriors from these two groups. Never been that good at deciding the compositions of these Got teams. But I don't think it actually takes six warriors to do this. Yes. Got it. Alright. Alright, let's go this way. Because I actually want to take out this group of enemies. The more enemies that you eliminate before you trigger the Baron, the easier it is to chase him down, because obviously his minions won't attack him. Okay, which group have they been triggered by? This group. Got it. Yes, sir. Well, in that case, I have an easy... Yeah. <laughs> and they're splitting up, which makes things even easier for me. Yes, sir. Your orders, sir. Turn on it. Let's get one grenade off. And take these guys off in a nice, comfortable, yes, evenly matched three versus six. Yes, sir. And like I said, I'm going to harvest. I only want two. Got it. I'll send you back. Barrel the Unworthy. <laughs> yes. Warriors don't usually get titles, but we do have that one. We're moving. Alright, I believe that the Baron is in here. He's sitting, I believe he's, I believe the Baron starts the level here, but I might be misremembering. However, okay. this area is rather well guarded with bowmen, we, and we want to Probably. avoid triggering them if we can. They're all pointed at us, it's almost like they already know that we're here. Yes, sir. Yes. But so I have my two groups defending the uh, two Your exits. Order, sir. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, these two warriors sir? are not in yes, good sir. shape. Oh, this is where he starts, right in the center of this room. Also, no fire arrows for this mission. Yes, sir. Yeah, some missions don't. I, I don't want to die. Okay, no. and he's already making a break for it. Yes. All right, yes, about face. Yep, he has. Four Stygian Knights in addition to himself. Let's see if the Dwarf can fit through here. But since we already have the exits covered, we should be okay. Moving. What now? Sir? Okay, if the Dwarf can get out from what? being stuck within a press of his own allies. Yes, sir. Okay, and now they're just going back in. Wonderful. They punked me. I have been punked by an AI. Yes. Alright. I at least sort of have a plan. So let the dwarf stay here. Alright. 
The Baron will also yes, ditch his guards if he decides that that's what's necessary to avoid being killed. Honestly, I think it was... A... Oh, now he's just going this way. He's just taking a different route. Okay, he's going around that way. We aren't really prepared for that. Got it. Okay. We're moving. I think my eight warriors can take out those four brigands. That means he's probably yeah. going for this exit, and he'll probably come through either this doorway or this doorway. So Soblindi can guard that. Yep. Oh, no, that's just a group of brigands. Okay. Um. Catch! Oh, shit. Yes, sir. Let's get him. One of my bowmen got confused and went off half-cocked. Yeah, this level requires an abnormal amount of multitasking, even by the standards of this game. Okay, Eustace, you head this way and take a little bit of damage, but more importantly, trigger the brigands to fight. Okay, well, we lost the bowmen, but we got rid of the brigands. Okay. So the next question is, where exactly is the Baron right now? Make up your mind. He's been activated, which means that he's going to keep uh, roaming the map looking for an exit, but his AI is also programmed to try to avoid getting too close to my units for fairly understandable reasons. So... Right away. And yeah, these... these Close quarters play havoc with ranged combat. And of course, the big open hall areas where ranged combat is very effective, he has them very thoroughly manned with archers. No fool is he. Alright, into this room. It's going to need to kind of gradually work our way through here until we locate the Baron. As tempting as it is, do not let your uh do not take any of your units off of guarding the ex yeah. the secret exits the moment you take your units off of guarding one of the exits he will go for that exit like he already knows that that's what you did okay we've triggered the stygian knights yes, that were guarding this area it takes a lot to make the bowmen leave the uh great hall okay. areas but we've triggered these stygian knights Got it. the yes. bowmen really are meaningless Ready. for that fight but I have Yarling, a young, inexperienced dwarf looking to prove himself, and he has a group of Stygian knights to demonstrate that on. Alright, let's just wait until they come through the door. Okay, take a shot at the front one. And now the second one. Actually, take, take a shot at this one. It will catch the front one in the splash damage. If it isn't a dud, which it is. Wonderful. Okay, run. That dud is going to cost us. Because Stygian Knights are actually rather powerful in melee combat. As you can see, we have one more. Everyone went into that fight with good health. We have one who's in critical health and one who's below half now. Yes, sir. Because of three Stygian Knights versus eight warriors. This is why you want to use explosives yeah. against them. Of course, explosives are one of the things that's hard to do in these close quarters that we're dealing with. And then the warriors next. This is, I'm guessing, a dining hall or something. It's good. This is, this is some really stark decorations he's got here. Just, just white on white with brown furniture. It's, I really feel like the Baron could use a better interior decorator. I mean. He apparently got uh, he apparently got his decorating tips from the the store all plaster all the time. Yes. Okay, I'm guessing he's here now. If we can lure him into one of our groups that's guarding. However, there are bowmen manning this hallway. Yes, sir. Yes. Got it. So, 
Let's yes, see how we can do this. I'm keeping the injured warriors to the back because they're a lot less yes, useful sir. against ranged units, but can still be helpful in a melee fight. But I think we're going to need to get through this room. So let's see how we can do that. Because he's probably... We saw him go this way, so he's got to be bunched up somewhere in here. He may be in this room. Come out and play. Come out. Come get? out, Baron. Don't Watch worry. We won't hurt you too much. We're on it. Okay. Unfortunately, the warriors are just going to have to suck it up and take some damage to get through here. But, melee generally does well against ranged units. And I'll let the warriors have that. Casualty. And we lost a warrior. Yep. Okay, the Baron is probably in here. It's probably in this room. The library. Yes. So... Because we would see, we'd be seeing him by now if he was here. Which means he's probably in this room. Well, I have the ability to cover the exit, cover both of the exits of this room. Unless he ran all the way back here and I just didn't notice. That too is possible. Got it. Yes. Come on, Baron. Come on. Yes. You know, you know, you, you Mr. Baron, you were definitely going to die someday, so why not die today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Almost there. Unless he's not in here, which is looking like he just isn't. Um. Sir? Yes, sir. Let's just check this one anyway, but it looks like he's not in any of these rooms. Oh, there's one last thing to test. On my way. Let's use a less experienced warrior for this. Got it. Could he be in here? Otherwise, he did go back to this main hall area. Yeah. <laughs> I've been punked again. He's just hiding in the main hall. Okay, um, how are we going to do this? Got it. Got it. Okay, let's retrieve these units. And I'll trade you for a less injured warrior from the other, the other group. Okay, looks like he tricked me again. He's hiding all the way back. Yes, yes, I'm fighting against an AI, and the AI has managed to outsmart me multiple times. I am smart. Of course, he would be hiding in the most defensible portion of the keep that's left. So the question is, how do we get to him? I don't actually need to kill all of the bowmen that are in here. I just need to trigger him to uh, retreat. We're moving. Yes, I gotta increase the game speed to get us into position a little bit faster. You get over to here. Alright. Okay. Oh, I want normal game speed. Okay. So this dwarf needs to go up to here. I have a plan for him. Actually, no, he needs to stay here. So first, let's let the dwarf catch up, which will only take a moment at 4x speed. And... Alright. Get these warriors to start attacking the archers up here. We're probably going to lose some folks doing this. Casualty. Yep, already lost one. Take that. Move out. 
Alright, you take a shot at this one. Kind of. Oh, and. <laughs> oh, we can't actually take a shot at that archer because we keep hitting the ceiling. We're on it. Uh, Wait. Yeah. Then where is he? Casualty. Right. And we already lost another warrior. What? Casualty. Okay, put an APB out. We're looking for an invisible fat guy. Casualty. And we lost... I think at this point we've lost the majority of our warriors. Casualty. Okay. You guys just take out as many of the enemy archers as you can while I try- oh, There he is! He's been here the whole time! What now? He got us. Bamboozled by an AI. What now? Okay. You just get out of there. Alright, you try to take out the Stygian Knight. You try to take out the Baron. Okay, one more. Just one more shot that isn't a dud. I need one shot not to be a dud. Uh, oh, come on! Okay, that's it. Time, time for the Dwarven Secret Technique. And it fa that failed too. Casualty. And that's the end. <laughs> and now we lose all our archers. Um... Okay, uh... Tristram, I need you to I need you to just kind of yes, sir. bluff your way into getting the Baron to go this way. Yeah. Alright. And he's fleeing right into the veteran. So Blindy, you need to take him out. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Mic up your mind. Yes. Okay, so you're wondering, the Dwarven secret technique is self-destruct, which is basically trying to use their tendency towards self-immolation for your own benefit. Okay. On my way. I have a plan. It isn't a good plan, but it's a plan. Burn! Okay, just take one shot. Okay, take out the take out the Stygian Knight first. You just, okay, yeah, that's the end of that warrior. No surprise, he accomplished very little. Yes. Though he did delay the Baron a little bit, which is really all we need. At this point, we've pretty much got the Baron where we want him. It's just a matter of actually taking the shot. Burn. Just keep pursuing. We'll catch up to you eventually. Baron killed air. Hiding under my nose for yes, so sir. long, for most of the level like that. Yes, sir. Alright. And he's contemplating taking a different route. Do you think he knows that this exit's already guarded? Casualty. Okay, that's the end of that warrior. But the other four warriors can probably take on the Stygian Knight. Casualty. Probably. One more shot. And Soul Blindy gets the kill. And once again, the traitor is killed specifically by being reduced to giblets by a dwarf, just like the first, just like in Myth One. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we lost some folks. Yeah, the missions are going to be getting a little bit more difficult as the as things progress. I lost more than half of the warriors and all of the bowmen. Dwarves came out pretty okay though. The warriors actually got most of the kills this time. That's unusual. Anyway, with three levels under our belt, 
We've reached the point where things are starting to get a bit more serious. That is going to be the end for this part. Thank you all for watching. I love you all, and I will see you next time.